Welcome to the Spirit of a Badass, where we celebrate stories of courage, hope, and resiliency. I'm your host, Alicia Jacobson. Hello, and welcome to the Spirit of a Badass. Thank you for listening today. Today is going to be a chill vibe. Usually when I set up, I'm like leaning forward here talking. I'm all excited, and I couldn't be more chill. I had all these ideas of what I wanted to record about, but I actually decided to lean into being kind of just chill and calm. And I'm going to share about it because I think it's something that not many people want to lean into. And there's this societal pressure to go, 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 create, 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 and do, buy, consume, all of those type things. And I have just, in the last probably year it's been happening, I've had this pull towards just being slow and I spent so much time achieving. I spent so much time trying to kind of prove my worth, earn my worth. I bought in hook, line, and sinker to that, you know, no pain, no gain, just that, just the hustle. And I've really been detaching from it and it feels, it feels uncomfortable, but it really feels good. And so today we are going to jump into my top 10 ways that I chill the fuck out and slow my roll. I think this is important. I'm going to give you my best one at the number 10. So I'm going to save the best to last. But other than that, I just did a brain dump of all the things I'm currently doing. So I've done many different things, but I'm just going to tell you what I'm currently doing to be chill. And then at the very end, I'm going to just rattle off some other ones that some people that I work with, the women I work with, some things that they do. But you know, it's October and we're going into winter. And if you think about winter, it's really, it's about slowing down and leaning into kind of comfort and coziness. It's darker. The leaves are all falling. And I think to some extent, we resist that and we feel uncomfortable being slow and not producing. It can be difficult to find a balance of being slow and really embracing that and also then still kind of doing all the things that you you know need to be doing because we can't just abandon all of our responsibilities but there is a way to do it and you can weave them in as you see fit but I wanted to encourage you as these days get shorter and I wanted to just encourage you to lean into that pull that you have and not judge it and think that it's negative, that you want to be more restful. Uh, it's it's very natural. And if you think about just the seasons, you know, winter is hibernating and then spring, everything's coming to life. Summer, everything's a buzz. And then fall, it's kind of that stroll about and just starting to turn inward. And so I, I just want to encourage you to follow your own lead, that inner pull that you have and not judge it or feel kind of guilty for doing it. So, all right, my first one is going for walks. Now, these are not necessarily power walks. These are not my rage walking (laughs) that I do. These are just walks with my friend where we chit chat and kind of give the rundown of the day or what's happening. It's really great for unloading. I've talked about this in past episodes. If you don't have a person to walk with, you could call them also, but I really prefer to do it with someone because it's very nice to kind of just unload. And it has to be obviously like a safe person that it's okay to unload with, but that the mental stress that you carry, the load that you carry, it is so much easier to be chill when you aren't carrying it alone. And that is one where I really come to depend on that. It's not something that we have in the winter so much because I do not like the cold, although I'm getting better at making myself get outside in the cold and things like that. But that is one that I just really appreciate doing that mental dump on the walk. And then it stays there. It does not come back with me. It's a really good processing that's next to somebody. There's just something, I don't know what it is, but I I feel like there's a a different, a different way of being when you're side by side with somebody 
Uh, that's also good for kind of tricky conversations to have it where you're uh, walking next to each other also or in the car. Uh, all right. Number two, kind of similar, but that's going for hikes. This is something I can't remember if I shared it on the podcast or not. I know I shared it on my socials, but I have been wanting to do more hiking, but I have been scared that there I'm, I'm, I'm a scared person, <laughs> but I'd be afraid of getting attacked or just all sorts of things that run through my mind. And I have been pushing myself out of my comfort zone and I have been going for hikes, sometimes alone, sometimes with other people, but just being outside, I just actually got back from one and just looking up and being in nature and hearing the sounds of nature is so calming. I really enjoy the sound of the gravel or dirt underneath my feet. It's so funny because it's a sound when I'm actually running. When I when I run, running did not make this list, by the way. <laughs> when I run, I hate the sound when I can hear my feet and I can hear my breath. So I have to have very loud music when I'm running to drown out that because it drives me nuts. But I do love it when I am out for a hike and just being in nature. And I've also been trying to do a different one every single time. And I've been doing it probably three times a week for the last three weeks to a month now. And I'm just, it's so inviting. It's, it's, I'm to the point where now I, I look forward to doing it where before it was sort of this nervousness when I was starting it. But I, I really feel like it has grounded me and made my mind calm. That's one thing that I have found recently that my mind doesn't do the sort of racing anymore. I've really been leaning into this, this calmness. So getting outside and going for different hikes. This I've told now a couple of people, I have this app called All Trails and my friend shared it with me. And then I have told, you know, a couple just a handful of other people and they all already knew about it. So <laughs> apparently this is not a secret app with the trails, but it tells me if you're on the trail, if you're off the trail, you can search for different trails, how long you want to go, the kind of terrain you want. And I just think that's really nice because I didn't know that existed. So I didn't even know oh, I could go here and I can explore this area. So that is one that I have fully embraced as of recently. And that's a new thing that I'm doing to just get out of my head. If you recall, one of the things that I wanted to do for this year, 2024, was to start dancing. And it was to sort of get out of my head and into my body. Dancing did not happen because it was at night. And I have now found that I do not have a lifestyle where things can have like classes that happen at night. And I tried YouTube. The next one was hiring a private dance instructor, but that was like, I don't need to be spending a ridiculous amount of money. I don't want to dance that bad. But the hiking has gotten me out of my head and into my body. It's been really interesting because I don't think when I hike, I think when I drive at home, but it's, it's such a interesting thing that I found that I wasn't prepared for not really prepared for, but I was surprised at that my mind sort of, it's sort of like white noise. I'm not thinking about anything when I'm out there. I'm just out there being in the present moment. Also making sure that nobody's around that is going to attack me. <laughs> I still have that little, little anxiety that is there. And I am signed up for self-defense classes because that is my next year. By the time spring rolls around next year, I want to be able to take a motherfucker down if I need to. So I am preparing for that. But that is not chill <laughs> at all. That is the opposite energy of chill. But I'm holding both. All right. So number three is taking baths. This is something actually this week. It's a full moon this week. And I don't know what had happened to me this week, but I was kind of explaining to a friend that I was talking to earlier like, let's just say in life, you carry around your, the, the weight of your life is like a 10 pound backpack and you just do that and you go through your day and you have your 10 pound backpack on and it's fine and you do it. But this week, man, it has felt like I'm carrying around like a 50 pound backpack and everything seems hard and not, nothing is wrong or bad. Like I am full of all things lovely, but it just feels 
like I'm living through like sludge or that quicksand that we were, you know, all prepared to avoid back in the eighties, but it has been challenging. And my husband has gotten home and twice this week, I was like, I'm just going to go take a bath. My body is just done. And I just take 30 minutes and I go by myself and I just sort of zone out and it has been just so lovely. And I don't do that in the summertime. So again, I'm saying things I'm actually utilizing right now for some, you know, in the summertime, a hot bath. I know some people take a bath every single night, but when it's hot out in the summer, there's nothing that I want to do. I don't want to take a bath. Uh, So I just do that in the wintertime and I've really been using it lately. And I tell you, I've just needed to like let the day melt away. And that has been a really big one. Next one is naps. I love naps. I think they are lovely and wonderful. And I just, if it doesn't have to be a long nap and it's not a power nap. This is not so I can power anything. This is very much a restorative, restful and peaceful nap so that I wake up feeling wonderful. And I can't actually take naps. So I'm not a person where I can go lay down and just fall asleep. My husband is like that. He could fall asleep, I mean, pretty much anywhere. I cannot do that. So what I actually do is I have started doing something called yoga nidra or nidra. It's kind of like a meditation. I'm not sure where the yoga part comes in because it's you're not moving. You're just laying there listening to this. I don't know that you're supposed to fall asleep, but I immediately fall into this trance restful. And I use the app Insight Timer because you can customize how long you want to do it. So anywhere from five minutes to over an hour. But I'm really trying to do that most days if I can. Just a few minutes of restful, just kind of letting my body be restful and not judging about it. Some people feel that napping is lazy and I would encourage you to lean into being restful because I'm guessing if you think that napping is lazy, you also do not let yourself rest at all. And resting is so just wonderful. It feels so good to treat your body in that way. And we need rest. We, we are not designed to go all the time. If you don't rest and you burn yourself at both ends, your body will likely get sick and make you sit your ass down and sleep, but then you're sick. So you can't even, you can't even enjoy it. Your body's like, fuck you. (laughs) I am now going to make you sick so that you, you stop. And if any of you have ever been under extreme stress, prolonged stress, high stress, you probably had this happen. And I used to have it happen all the time. And now I just take little, little tiny naps not every day, but especially in this winter season, that's when they, I have an uptick and that there's too many things that happen when it's, you know, warm out in the summertime. I, it does, just doesn't happen them. And I don't need it then, but when it gets cooler and in the winter and late fall, I absolutely need it and absolutely lean into it. Next one is meditations. This is kind of in conjunction with the naps, but it is an actual meditation that I will put on kind of with a breathing exercise too. And it can either be laying down or sitting. Sometimes I like to lay on my yoga mat or I do it first thing in the morning where I will listen to a meditation. Again, I use insight timer because you can do it anywhere from three minutes to a long one, but it's just that sort of pause that we don't take during the day unless you're intentionally trying to take it and just a reset and a really great way to enter your day or put it in a cap on your day or midday, just anything to just do a quick reset. And it's not the kind of meditation where you're sitting and your mind isn't thinking you're listening to something. It's usually guiding you to breathe and maybe do a body scan, things like that. But if it's something where you're like, oh, I've tried meditation, it doesn't work. This is not that kind of meditation. This is a few minutes of stillness that do wonders for your mind and do wonders for just kind of the internal busyness state that we get used to, that rushing that kind of scrambling, overwhelmed feeling that we get used to. It's just, it's, it's like a, a weighted blanket for you. And if you don't have a weighted blanket, that helps too. I love my weighted blanket. I'm right now getting some for my kids because I borrowed one to my daughter 
and she loved it so much, but I need to get one appropriate for her weight size. So weighted blankets are also good if you have an anxious mind in the evening. I sometimes, even in the winter, I will crawl under mine just in bed. All right. Next one is yoga. Again, I do not do because I do hot yoga, not something I do in the summertime. It's, they don't need hot on hot, but in the wintertime, I'm now back to my yoga. I prefer doing a yin. I did do the yoga nidra or nidra, uh, a class on that, but I started a fascia yoga class that I really enjoyed more of the slow moving. There is power yoga that I go to. However, I, I omit the power part of it. And then usually I just end up kind of laying there, but it's just a nice way to connect with your body in a very slow, thoughtful and intentional way. And it really promotes that almost like a, a just the connection with your body or the mind body connection and, and like a healing and thinking about what you're doing again getting you out of that rushing state next one is painting this one i'm really really excited about right now it's a new thing that i started i wanted to get out of my head and into my body and a lot of it is just getting out of my head the overthinking the, I don't really ruminate, but my mind is just constantly, I, I heard that some people don't have this like narrating in their head and mine just, she doesn't shut up. <laughs> it's annoying. And I stumbled upon watercolor painting and I found this creator. I can't remember her name right now, but I found this creator on TikTok and one of her voice is lovely. I actually, I want her to be on this podcast because I think it's such a neat thing to do. So I went out and I got the supplies. There's nothing fancy that I'm doing, but something about having the paint on the paintbrush and then just the kind of mindless strokes that you're doing. It's really wonderful. And I'm really, really enjoying it. My husband was leaving the other morning. I just was quick doing, I was drawing circles, <laughs> just circles. He's like, Oh, you're painting? Because it was like at an odd time. I, I was, I think I was going to the, I don't remember if I was going to the gym afterwards, but I was like, I just wanted to take five minutes and just paint. And it felt so good. And there also something that I've noticed when I've started doing it is I do deep breathing. I am more, I don't know why, but I just take deeper breaths instead of the shallow breaths. I'm just more, more in tune with my body and my breath. And it has been just a really neat habit that I have started. Uh, I stumbled upon another creator and she said that every morning she just tears two pieces of paper, watercolor paper in half. And she draws like these four houses. And she says, she just does it. It's, she sets a 10 minute timer and she does it. And that's really not that long. And if you think about the benefit of doing something for just a few minutes a day and starting that habit and what it actually can do for you long term. I mean, some of these things, uh, you know, I've just started a lot of these things I, I've done for a long time and I'm, I'm really seeing the benefits of doing them now. I'm really feeling much more calm. I'm feeling like my mind is not a crazy hamster wheel racetrack. I'm, I'm just seeing the benefits of being different and doing things in a less hectic, rushed way. The other thing that I do, and this is, again, this is kind of the late fall, winter, is candles. I saw, well, I'll give you a hint. My next one is watching Trashy TV. But back to the candles. I saw on watching Trashy TV, so we're going to combine numbers eight and nine right now because I'll just tell you about it. So I like to watch, I think it's called Selling Sunset. And it, they're like real estate people in LA and wear very wild, fancy outfits to sell real estate. And there's always some sort of drama that is happening. And anyway, one of them in their living room had this round, probably like a foot and a half in diameter and it was full of candles and it was just so beautiful. And all these candles kind of melted in different ways and it looked beautiful. So I went and got this from Target. I don't know. It was like this round thing and some candles. And in the morning, I light these candles for just a little bit and I just stare at these candles. Kind of how, you know, like a campfire puts you in a trance. It It is so calming. It is so again, mindless. There's just something 
beautiful about your mind not working and not just messing with you. Cause I feel like our minds just fuck with us. And I just look at the candles and it, it's not for very long, but long enough that I feel really good about it. So that is one. And I got it from number nine, which is watching trashy TV. That is my end of the day. My husband and I will usually watch one show and we just, my brain is off and I I enjoy the trashy TV a lot. We are currently watching Love is Blind or we like to fold in some modern family or the office. That's like our standbys that we that we do. Schitt's Creek has made several appearances watching those episodes through because it's just, I want to laugh or be like, just, I want to just be not in my, not in my thinking brain. And the last one I told you, I was saving the best one for last. The last way that I chill the fuck out and slow my roll is saying no. Now I know that's not like a doing of anything, But you can't slow down. You can't be chill if you're saying yes and piling your plate full. You have to make space for all the things that I just said. And now I don't do all these things in the same day. I mix and match, but I do something every day. And I would not be able to do that if I allowed other people and other things to be in charge of my calendar and guilt lead the way by saying yes to things when I really didn't want to. And I am able to be more in control of these things and add the things I really want to add by saying no to things that are not for me and that drain my energy. The whole goal here is to be restful and lean into that so that when you do have the things that are exciting or maybe a little bit more stressed that you have the reserves there to be able to really fully be present in the other things, but to keep your body and your mind kind of ready for those things, you have to have that sort of yin and yang and you have to have that sort of counterbalance of chill to be able to really put all of the effort into the other ones. And by saying no to things, is a great way to do that and not overextending yourself, your time, your energy, your calendar. So you can do that by looking at your week. One of the the women in the women's circle this a couple of weeks ago, she kind of had this where the, the calendar was kind of running her instead of her running the calendar. And she decided to look at her calendar through, we called it like a new lens. So looking at the calendar and thinking, is what I'm thinking about putting on here going to get me to my end goal? Some people like to just block their calendar with some free time. One Another woman in the women's circle, we were talking about kind of creating buffers. If you listen to the episode on Overwhelm, I talked about creating kind of buffer space. And she was saying how she, every month, her and her husband block off a whole weekend where they don't allow, where they're not planning things. And that means you have to say no to some of the things that you're offered if you're going to protect that space. But think about it. If you have a whole two days where you're not putting anything on the calendar, and some of you, I mean, I have, I don't know how many different sports and games that I have to go to and all these things this weekend. So I can't really say no to those things. But if you're in a life space where you're able to block off that time and really just rejuvenate yourself. I mean, by month three, you're going to really look forward to that weekend. I mean, I can't tell you how many times when I was in the gym, I would talk to people about, you know, what they had going on. They were like, oh my gosh, we have nothing on the calendar this weekend. I'm so excited. And that is like, oh, accidentally this happened. Not we intentionally did this, but just think if you intentionally blocked off an entire weekend or an entire day of the weekend you get that we have nothing this weekend feeling like intentionally. That's just not an accident. It didn't just happen that way. You did that on purpose as a gift to yourself and your family. And I was like, oh, you go. Like that was, I really loved that. So saying no is my most important one that makes all the rest of these have the possibility of even happening. 
Now I'm going to share with you one that I want to do, but I don't have the space for it. I really love laying on the ground and looking up at the sky. I did this last year in the wintertime. I was trying to just be outside and I just love looking at the clouds and seeing the like trees or leaves and things like that. But I, it was windy. I don't like wind. It was windy. So I went and I laid on my like front porch because it would block me from the wind and I could still look up. And nobody's out in the winter usually, but oh my goodness, my neighbor a couple houses down drove by, stopped, reversed their car back up and shouted, are you okay? Because I was laying on my back looking up and I think they was like dead. <laughs> they felt really bad. So I stopped laying and I, I can't lay anywhere. If I lay anywhere outside in my yard because I live in a neighborhood People are going to think that I need assistance and I don't. I just want to look up. I talk to my husband. I'm like, you know what I want to do? I want to get one of those. It's like a like a day bed type thing, but it's made for on your deck. And we have a spot on our deck where people would not be able to see me. And I want to put it out there for next year so I can just lay out there and look up at the sky because especially after I go for like a run or something, I really just love that sort of chill vibe. All right. Here are ones that either I have done in the past or other people. And I just want to give you these so that you have other ideas of ways that you can incorporate this in. Uh, cooking. That's a big one that people do. They find it so very chill. Me, not so much. And that would also be baking. I find that stressful, but people that is their therapy, but that is a way that you can slow down and you can be absolutely chill. And do it with intention and really think, you know, you could add some, you know, deep breathing into it, kind of like I was talking about with the painting. But those are two that really I hear. In the sauna, my husband loves going in the sauna. Many of you uh, have a sauna in your house. I don't have access to one anymore. But when I used to go to a local gym and they had a sauna and I loved it. But that's a really nice one. Some places have it where you can go by like passes to a sauna. Uh, But that's a nice one that you can do as we are in the winter to kind of be nice and toasty warm. Uh, Listen to or play music. If you are a musician, uh, you know that that is one where you can kind of turn off your mind. Uh, Otherwise, listening to some music. I started listening to, I don't know what it is. I'm actually going to look it up because I found it quite interesting as long as it doesn't play here. I listened to 852, I think it's called Hertz, H-Z, on Spotify. And it is like kind of like when there's an emergency broadcast that comes across on the TV, like in the 90s, like that. er, But it makes my mind all of a sudden there's no thought. It goes like my thinking goes away. Now, my husband, I was listening to it the other day and my husband's like, what is that sound? And it made him super anxious. So I don't know what the difference between our brains are, but mine, it goes completely like silent. And his was like, get me out of here. This is the most horrible sound. But listening to playing music. Uh, doing breath work. That's something I've really been thinking about lately of getting a breath work certification or go taking some sort of breath work, something or other, but doing any sort of breath work. That is one, I don't know if I've shared on here before, but my husband started doing breath work and he does a lot of box breathing and just deep breathing. Like he'll go outside and take his shoes off. He He's crazy like me, but he'll get grounded, he calls it, and just put his feet in the grass and deep breathing and things like that. And he, or he'll go walk the dog. That's another one also. If things are feeling stressful around here, like the kids are just crazy or we're having a moment where it's like, you know what? We need some space. He will go out and just walk the dog around the block. And he does deep breathing when he does that. Reading. I can't read because I'll fall asleep. I don't think listening to books falls in this category. At least it doesn't for me, maybe for some people. It does, but I feel like that's usually happening when you're driving, not just like sitting and chilling, listening to it. I fall asleep if I read a book, but reading can be a real great one. I had a another woman in my women's circle that mentioned that she was going to read books, like high kind of emotional, kind of hitting emotional spots in you, books to so that she could kind of express emotion through reading. And I thought that was just such a neat thing, but reading for to just kind of check out kind of like my trashy TV, that can be really helpful. Also drawing kind of up there with my, any sort of arts and crafts drawing, 
journaling. A lot of people love journaling. Not something that I've really, I haven't been able to do it in years and years and years. It's not something I find helpful, but many, many people find journaling to be extremely helpful. If you listen to last week's podcast with Kim, that was one of her top things that she finds helpful in life was journaling. That's my list. That is my list. I encourage you to find things that are helpful for you to be just chill and calm and lean into this kind of slower season without judgment of yourself and thinking that you need to keep getting more and more done, done. Just chill the fuck out and lean into the season and the calmness of it and the quietness of it. And that's okay. We are not meant to be a hundred miles an hour all the time. We have to have rest. We have to have We have to chill. We have to do things. And it's important. It's really important to incorporate that in your life. Just like you can't have that all the time, we also have to do things. But if you're doing all the time, you will get burned out. So this is a good season to start leaning into this and practicing kind of flexing this chill vibe muscle. All right. Thank you for listening. If you know somebody that you think this would be helpful for, I encourage you to share it. If you want to share with me, I would love to hear from you. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook and share with me how you like to be chill. Maybe you have one that matches mine or you have one that I did not list. I would love to hear it and share it with those out there so that they can, they can also learn from you. Other than that, have a great week and I will talk to you next week. Spirit of a Badass is a Lit Path Studios podcast and is produced by Jamie Gale and Alicia Jacobson. Music by Shane Ivers. We'll be back with another inspiring interview. Until then, keep your spirits high and your energy badass.